Hi, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, we are going to walk through the topic matrices. Okay, so we are going to look at the types of matrices. We are going to look at the terminologies assigned with matrices. We are going to consider applications, you know, how to use determinants, and so much more. All you just need to do is to stay with us on this channel. Course will be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel and for this video lesson we are going to dig through the topic matrices. So let's begin with definition. So how would you define matrices? You know for singular it's referred to as matrix. So it's just a collection of numbers, entries, elements, symbols or expressives okay and these are arranged in a particular pattern in a rectangular array okay for a pattern and that pattern should include your row and your column okay so rows and columns and of course it is well enclosed in a box bracket so this is what i mean when i refer to a matrix so you have this so what i what i've just described can be painted from here okay so you can see we have numbers you can refer to this as elements okay or entries all right and you can see that they are arranged in a rectangular array or pattern so you can see it's quite rectangular like this it's looking like square okay so and of course it is enclosed within a box bracket so let's move on so you can see from here if i decide to add more entries or elements Let's say I have five and I have seven, okay. So like this, this is looking more rectangular, right? I think this is square, of course. This is square. All right, it's fine. I just want to see if I can alter the shape. Okay, I can do that this way. So we can see this. This is looking more rectangular. Okay, so that is what we have. So you can look at this. Okay, so what we have right here, this is the principal diagonal, okay, or the leading diagonal, or the main diagonal. Okay, so then we have every other entries elsewhere. All right, so let's work with that um, understanding. So we have some terminologies that we should understand, okay, or we should comprehend when it comes to matrix. Okay, so at first, this refers to rows. Okay, you can see that's horizontal then these are columns all right so you can see this matrix now it has how many rows we have one two you can see two how many columns one two three so that is two times three or i can refer to this as two by three matrix okay so this expression represents the dimension or the size or the order of this matrix. So if you are asked, what is the dimension or what is the size or what order is this matrix? This is two by three. Okay, so this makes it very easy. So I can bring this out. So if I want to make a kind of expression, I can say this, right? This is the first column, right? And this is the first, first row, then first column. This is a first row and second column, isn't it? Then seven belongs to the first row and third column. Okay, so the next ones here I have, this is the second row, the first column, right? This is the second row, the second column. And of course, I have here, this make your second row and third column. So perhaps, or in case you see this kind of expression, you can interpret them properly. All right, so we have so much terminologies to walk around with, okay? So we still have adjoint, we have minus, we have cofactor, we have transpose, and so much more. 
All right, so let's move on to the types of matrix or matrices. First, let's start with vector, okay? So for a vector matrix, okay, it can be row, it can be column. So when I say a row vector, a row matrix, it means that the matrix has just a single row. For instance, if I have something like this, You can see just a single row. If it is a column matrix or a column vector, it's going to be something like this. You can see a single column. So let's move on to the square matrix. What do you notice here? How many rows? One, two. Columns? One, two. So a square matrix is one with equal number of rows and columns. That's all. Then let's move on to diagonal matrix. So imagine if I have this. Okay, let me start off with this. Okay, then I have this. Then this. Okay, so what can we pull up from here? We can see that the principal diagonal, right, is filled with what? With one. It's filled with a non-zero value, isn't it? So a diagonal matrix is one with every other spot, okay, in the matrix is they are filled with zero except the principal diagonal. Okay, we can see that now. So that's for a diagonal matrix, just like the name implies, diagonal. So then what do we mean by a unit matrix or an identity matrix or an elementary matrix? So either you say unit matrix, identity matrix, or, a, or an elementary matrix. What it means is that for the principal diagonal, okay, the value you will find there is one. It's quite different or distinct from diagonal matrix okay take note of all of these they are square matrix okay so of course you can see this if you look at the number of rows one two three columns one two three three by three matrix right that is still a square so for a unit matrix every value okay that is going to be assigned to these spots okay they are going to carry one they are just one okay that's for a unit matrix okay for a diagonal matrix you know at one point i can decide to have probably i can have one i can have zero here you can see that okay so that's for a diagonal matrix okay for a diagonal matrix still i can still have other values aside from one okay i can have two i can have one i can have four okay so, so what matters for a diagonal matrix is every other spot zero the principal diagonal non-zero as much as possible unit matrix the principal diagonal filled with what with one or true okay then let's come to a scalar matrix of course it's still a type of square matrix okay what you should find well what is unique to scalar matrix is the fact that whatever value represented here they are the same thing on the main diagonal so for a scalar matrix instead of having one two four i should have two 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 or i can have four 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 or i can have five 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 do we see that okay so that is what we can tap out regarding scalar matrix so i'm going to take it again for a square matri matrix, you know, same number of rows and columns. A diagonal matrix is a type of square matrix, okay, whereby every other spot, okay, can be, should be zero, okay, but the principal diagonal, they are filled with non-zeros. Then when it comes to unit matrix, you know, every other spot still zeros, okay, but the principal diagonal filled with one, the value one, the number one. Then for scalar matrix, what matters for a scalar matrix should be every other spot still zero okay but what you have here must be the same value okay so even if it is one 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 it means it's five 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 four 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 six 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 same value throughout the principal or the leading diagonal okay so i can use this to explain um, a scalar 
matrix, of course, all right? Or for other type of matrix. You know, we have um, the upper triangular and the lower triangular. For an upper triangular matrix, you know, somewhere beneath, okay, the principal diagonal, they are filled with zero. Okay, so uh, that means I can have four, I can have three, I can have two, I can have anything, okay? So for upper triangular matrix, you know, this side is filled with numbers, then this side beneath the principal diagonal, okay, they are filled with zeros, okay? The opposite is going to happen when it comes to a lower triangular. So for a lower triangular, you know, the lower side, the lower side underneath the principal diagonal, they are filled with non-zero values, okay? Then the upper side, they are filled with zeros. Do we see that now? Okay, then for equal matrix, you know, equal matrix means when you pick up two, two matrices, okay, they have the same dimensions, the same elements positioned in the same spot. So this is what I mean. If I have two, four, five, two, okay, then same thing, two, five, four, two. So we can see this accounts for equal matrices. All right, so we have so many types of matrices. We still have the involuntary um, matrices, okay, whereby a matrix is still the same inverse result as itself, okay? We have the symmetric, we have the skew symmetric or the anti-symmetric, okay? We have so much more that we are going to dig through as we proceed in this video lesson. So let's move on to the properties. You know, just like we have properties that we pointed Okay, regarding sets, regarding different topics that we have worked uh, on. Okay, so we also have some properties assigned when it comes to matrices. Okay, we have the commutative property, we have the distributive property, you know, the left, the right distributive property, we have the null property, we have the identity property, we have the associative property, and so much more. Then what are the operations that we can carry out in matrices, okay? We can carry out addition, we can carry out subtraction, we can carry out multiplication, okay? Multiplication can be by scalar, that is, you are using a particular number to, to multiply an entire matrix. Like, for instance, if I want to apply scalar multiplication here, yeah, that means I'm saying maybe 6 multiplies this O. So it's going to be 6 times 5, that is 30. 6 times 4, that is 24. 6 times 3, that is 18. Do we see that now? So for a matrix multiplication, I'm using an, an entire matrix to multiply another matrix. Do we see that now? So, of course, when it now comes to, you know, I've mentioned addition, I've mentioned subtraction, I've mentioned multiplication, but not division, okay? So in matrices, we do not carry out division. We refer to it as inverse or inversion. Okay, I'm going to show us how we can carry out inversion in, in the video lesson, okay, as we go deeper. All right, so we can also use matrices, okay, to provide solution to simultaneous linear equations, okay? We can use different methods. We can use the matrix, the matrix inverse. We can use the terminant method. We can use the Gauss elimination method or the further um, expression or the further version of it, which is the Gauss Jordan elimination method, okay? And so much more. All right, so we also have application of determinants. You know, determinants are just values that you can use to represent an entire matrix. Okay, let me give you an instance. Okay, let me pick this to show us what a determinant is. So I have two, I have five, I have four, I have two. So how do I get determin determinants for this matrix? You just do this, okay, this to this, then this to this. So I'm going to have two times two, right? minus 4 times 5. Do we see that? So 2 times 2, that is 4. Minus 4 times 5, that is 20. So 4 minus 20, so that means minus 16 is determinant for this entire matrix. So with the application of determinants, I can, det I can tell if a particular matrix is singular or non-singular. Of course, I'm still going to explain that. I can also determine if a particular matrix, okay, as or the existence of inverse is possible for a particular matrix. And of course, I can use it to do so much more. So right there, we've come to the summary for the video lesson on matrices. All you need to do is to click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the MySchool website. Right there, we have provided with simple guidelines 
on how you can get access to the full video content by subscribing. And do not forget to hit the like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get notified immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you.